Okay, this video is going to walk you through a patch I made for audio playback and analysis. This is actually a Max project. So when you open it up, it's a folder and you unzip it. And inside you have the Max project folder and then two folders, one for media, which has the song that I'm gonna use as an example to analyze. Um, and then also the patchers folder, which actually has the Max patch in it that does the analysis. To open this up, I click on, double click on the Max project, which opens up my folder over here, and then the patch. Okay, so let's start over at the left-hand side. We have, first of all, a little ditty here that allows you to turn the sound on and off with the space bar. That's the ASCII value 32. So when I hit space, if I click on the max patch and then I hit space, it turns on and off the speakers and the microphone, just for ease of your patching. Then over here, I have a playlist object with my sound file already preloaded into it. If you want to change this, which I'm sure you do, you take your own sound file and just drag it on top of this playlist. Then I'm taking the left channel and the right channel and just sending them into one gain slider for simplicity's sake, which I can turn up here, turn up and down, and send that over to just this main um, easy DAC object, which is gonna send the audio out to my speakers. This little object here is a multiply signal object. And what it does is uh, changes the amplitude, uh, or you can think of this as more or less the volume. It's actually the, the sound pressure, um, or in physics, the displacement from the mean. Um, but what I'm using it for here is to turn on and off the output to this particular speaker object. So my toggle object sends a zero or a one, as you already know. So when I multiply the signal by zero with the toggle off, I can't hear anything. When I multiply it by one, it's just the same signal coming through to the speaker. I'm going to turn my speakers on and show you all of that that I just uh, just mentioned. So right now you see it's playing. You can see this moving forward, but I don't hear anything. And that is because this toggle is off. When I turn it on, I'm now sending audio straight to my speakers. So why am I doing that? I'm doing that because over on this side of the patch, I'm doing some frequency analysis. So I'm splitting my sound file into my lows, mids and high frequencies using this cross object. Now, I just wanna mention there are way, way, way better ways of doing this, uh, of, of doing sound filtering. Um, this, is, this is not the best way. This is a pretty simple and crude way of doing it, um, but it works for our purposes. So we're using this cross tilde object and we have two of them and the cross object takes our entire sound file here and splits it. Every frequency that is below 300 Hertz comes out of the left outlet and every frequency that is above 300 Hertz comes out of the right. So we have our lows under 300 frequency, uh, 300 Hertz here being analyzed. And then I'm sending that out to another cross object. So I've got all frequencies between 300 and 2000 um, in this middle section here, and then all of my frequencies above 2000 over here on the highs. You can change these, um, you can change these arguments here with the inlet here. So you could change this message to whatever you wanted it to be, um, or you can change it directly in the object. So what I want you to be able to do with this patch is to listen to the full sound file, but then also be able to just isolate the lows, the mids, and the highs. Okay. This analysis section here is visualizing the audio in a couple of different ways. This is a scope object which is showing, showing us the waveform. This is a spectroscope, which is showing us the amplitude 
um, on the y-axis and the frequency on the x-axis. And then I had this object called peak amp, which is looking at the peak amplitude every 20 milliseconds. And it's turning that into, from a signal value, into an actual floating point value. So all up and through this point, we have these little green zebra striped chords that indicates that we are using, this is an audio signal that's passing through here. Once we get to the peak amp, the peak amp is spitting out this floating point value through a gray patch cord. This is no longer an audio signal that we can listen to um, or, or manipulate. It's just the value at this point. Then I have these two multi-sliders showing the difference between an unsmoothed uh, peak amplitude and a smoothed peak amplitude being smoothed, smoothed with this slide object right here. And then lastly, I have a threshold object. Whenever the amplitude gets above a certain value, then we're looking at um, a yes or no, true or false. Is it above 0.3? Yes, it is. And then it's sending out a bang when that is happening. Okay, so last uh, but not least, you have up here a switch object. And you've probably already noticed that on the left side, I have this sound file. But on the right side, I have this uh, this icon here that looks like a microphone. So what uh, this is, is uh, it's called the uh, ADC, or the object is actually easy ADC, and that's the analog to digital converter or your microphone. So it's taking live sound from your mic and it's allowing you to actually analyze the sound. So let's stop this sound file. I'm gonna switch my switch here by clicking on it over to my microphone, and then I am uh, going to turn this gate on. So if you send, okay, there's this thing called a feedback loop, right? If you are speaking into a microphone and then you are listening to that audio, you're sending that directly to some speakers, and then the speakers are sending your audio out into the room that your microphone can hear, then the speaker go, the microphone goes to the speaker, which goes back to the microphone, which goes back to the speaker, which goes back to the microphone, and you end up with this screeching, awful feedback loop, which burns your ears and you don't want that to happen. So I've put two safety things in place here for you so that this doesn't happen to your ears. One is that I have the microphone signal passing through a gate, so you have to intentionally turn it on with this toggle here. And then when you turn on this toggle, I have a zero coming out here and going to all of these other toggles, which were turning on the speakers for the lows, mids, and highs. So just in case you forget to turn it off, um, it's gonna turn off that for you. Okay, um, so we're gonna turn that on and then we are going to turn on our, oops, no, don't turn on the speakers, bad idea. Don't do that, Kimberly. Um, what you are going to do is then uh, turn the DAC on and off again to kind of reinitialize back through the switch. And now you can see that my analysis in my patch is actually analyzing my live sound. So you're hearing my voice and you're watching it visually being analyzed on the screen.